Okay. Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagrevich with Global Vision Ministries. Thank you for joining us today. Our special guest today is Reverend Marcy Labaki, and she will be sharing some powerful thoughts with us today. And together, we will pray for America, for the nations, for your needs. If you have a need you want us to include, please write us, let us us know. But before we go any further, I would like you to, uh, to ask you to please press that little share button right now. It's so easy, so simple. Uh, just press that button right now, and that will share this broadcast, if you're watching on Facebook, to your profile, so your friends could be watching together with you. If you are watching on YouTube, there's a share option there, and do sign up to our YouTube channel. It is free. And if you are watching us in other places, such as LinkedIn or Telegram or Rumble, thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining us, those of you watching us on our webpage. Welcome, Sister Marcy. Thank you so much. And God bless you, everyone who tuned in. Uh, be ready for God to speak to your heart through our prayers, through reading the word, through delivering the word. God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change with the news, but he is still the same. Amen. I want us to start off by praying for Israel. We know the situation is not good, but in the midst of trials, in the midst of war, in the midst of what is happening in the Middle East, we know that God has not changed. His power, his love, his word has not changed. And I pray that God would intervene in the midst of this tragedy, that God would use his people his church in this hour as the hands and feet of Jesus to minister to those in need, to minister to those who are in fear, to minister to those who have lost loved ones, to minister to those who are suffering right now. So let us pray for Israel. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let's pray for the protection of life, of innocent life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lift up the apple of your eye, Israel, for you in prayer. And Father, we send your word to that nation. We speak shalom. We speak peace. We speak protection over your people. And we pray for the salvation of the Jewish nation. Father, we know that you love them. You care for them. And Jesus, you died for them as you died for us. So in this hour, I pray that you would use your church, that your church would arise strong and fearless and, and compassionate. And Father, I pray that they would shine in this hour and they would be used right now, that they would say, Lord, use me here am I. And Lord, I pray that you would use uh, your people right now, your church, to reach those who are in need, those who are suffering, those who are in fear. Lord, speaking the right word, ministering, helping, providing protection. And Father, we pray for an end to this war. We pray, oh God, for the protection of innocence. We pray for those hostages to be immediately released, uh, safe and unharmed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Sister Marcy, we will pray later for other nations. We will pray for America. We will pray for Ukraine. Ukraine is uh, continuing to undergo attack after attack. Areas where we have ministered, areas where we have uh, put so much effort into mm -hmm. training missionaries, raising up new churches, are under heavy attack. Some of them occupied, some of them being shelled on a regular mm -hmm. basis, even places like Pokrovsk, where we had our Bible school for a mm -hmm. number of years. Um, just a bad hit on one of the administration buildings in that town or city. And um, the town of Audiivka being bombarded, just being uh, 
trying they're trying to level it like they done to Bakhmut and Mariupol, but our God has not changed, and God's people are praying, and we are praying, and we are praying in agreement with the Ukrainian mm -hmm. for an end to that war. In fact, let's mm -hmm. do that right now. Amen. 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 Sister Marcy, would you lead us in that prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we declare peace and the power of the Holy Spirit to begin to work powerfully in the Ukraine. You have been working, Lord, but we need to see some signs and wonders and miracles to set your people free so they can evangelize. Your people are around the world from Ukraine, Lord. I, we've met them in Africa and other countries of the world, Lord, and they are sincere about evangelizing the world. And Lord, we just pray that you will work your mighty power in that Ukraine and stop that war and give strength and grace to your people to continue on in your name as they deliver the word, as they deliver the goods, as they are praying for help for those who are needy, Lord, as they're getting those who are not saved, they're getting saved and they're coming to church and acknowledging you as Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for that. And we just pray for the pastors and the churches and those who are not saved, Lord, they will find their way somewhere, somewhere to a church, somewhere to a pastor, somewhere to a Christian. So they'll be born again. And then it really matters not because we will go to see you if we go by war, if we go by peace, Lord, we will finally meet all together in glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you that you have heard and do hear the, our prayers, and we thank you for providing protection for those pastors, yes. for the volunteers, for those who are on the front lines in that yes. world in Ukraine. Father, may your angel wings cover them from above and beneath, from the left and the right, from the front and the rear. Oh, God, just create a cocoon of protection around them as they take aid to the needy, as they preach the gospel in those war yes. zones. And Lord, we pray for your protection over the church buildings. Uh, uh, Lord, both on the, um, uh, on the free side as well as in the occupied territories. And Lord, we pray for those who are working on the most difficult circumstances in those regions, in the name of Jesus Christ, give protection, give cover to them, we pray. And Lord, we pray for the salvation of millions of souls in the midst of this situation in Jesus Christ's name. And Lord, as I pray for Ukraine, I'm also reminded of Armenia and that conflict, uh, that zone of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh between Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan. And Father, we pray pray for peace in that region. We pray for those refugees uh, that have fled from that area into Armenia. We pray for their provision. We pray for their salvation. We pray for the pastors and leaders, especially those that we have trained and worked with over the years, that you would strengthen them, use them, oh God, mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. May they be the hands and the feet of Jesus reaching to the needy in this hour, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, Sister Marcy, um, I know that you have some thoughts to share with us, and I want to give you ample time. Those of you that have joined us, uh, we're on here Monday through Friday. On Tuesdays, we do English-Russian or English-Ukrainian. On Fridays, we do English-Spanish. On other days, we are on here in English, continuing to pray for this nation, for mm -hmm. other nations, and for the needs mm -hmm. of the saints of God around the world. And they have been coming in from different places, from Nepal, from here in America, from Canada, from Cuba, and we will be bringing those before the Lord in prayer. But at this time, we want to hear from Sister Marcy. Amen. God bless you. And I greet you all in the name of the Lord. And uh, let's look into the word. I just felt that I need to read the scripture before I share anything else. Because there's such a principle here that is a victorious principle. It says, 
And whatsoever, Colossians 3, verse 17, if you take time and just write it down, don't start looking into your Bible right now because you'll miss it. Colossians 3, verse 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Do it all in the name of Jesus, whatever you do by in word or deed. Amen. When you do it in the name of Jesus, you are automatically above. You're above. You're above the war. You're above the trouble. You're above the tri uh, trials. You're above the storm. You are speaking and doing deeds above. Think it. We need to be above these days, don't we? We, we, we? we can sink down so easily with all the news and all the reports and all that we listen to, all the trouble that's going around the world. You know what? We as Christians, we need to be like the children of Israel were when they were coming out of the uh, Egyptian bondage. Nobody had light, but they had lights. Their house was full of light. Our house needs to be full of light. Our lives need to be full of light. And what's light? The word is light. Jesus is the light of the world. And then he said in Matthew 5, 14, I believe it is. He said, you are the light. Sister, Sister Marcy, we've, we kind of lost you there for a moment. Can you repeat that last statement you just uh stated we had um, we had a little freeze up on here if you could just repeat the last statement all right jesus said in matthew 5 14 he said uh you know that don't put the light under the, the candle under the bushel and so on and so forth and so we need to not put our candles under the bushel now since there are so many people taking different sides. And he said, Matthew 5, 14, he said, you are the light of the world. You say, who am I? Jesus is the light. Isn't Jesus in you? Jesus is in you. The word is in you. And maybe it's not touching your feelings that, uh, that great now because your feelings are, you're watching the news, you're watching the bad reports and your feelings go down with all of that. But you know, the Bible says that Jesus is still the same. He's still in you. He said, I will never leave you. He said that. He, he, it don't matter how your feelings are down and how you feel depressed and you feel so despondent and in despair. What are we going to do? How is this going to end up? You know what's going to end up? It always will end up good with the Lord because Jesus is in you. The light of the world is in you. And do you know that God needs all of us with the light in us? to shine through us hallelujah right now even israel needs us all to take a stand and to declare who we are in christ and not to hide and not to say well i don't know what they're going to do well who cares what they're going to do i know what god's going to do god's going to keep us protect us if he needs us on this earth he'll keep us on this earth to be the light but if we're the light he will keep us as you notice, so many preachers are living until they're 90 years old. Why? Because they are the light. God is not going to put out the light because there's, there's so much darkness that he needs as many people as he can. And, you know, sometimes we think, oh, God, heal me so I could feel better. You know, God wants to heal you more than you want to get healed. Did you ever think about that? You know why God wants to heal you? He needs you. He needs you on this earth. He doesn't want you getting to, he's got enough angels. Oh, don't worry about you going over there. You know, do your job on this earth. Yeah. God wants to heal you so you can do his work. So you can yeah. spread the gospel, the kingdom of God. So you can speak to others who need to be born again. You just think if you were not born again. And this Christian dies because they didn't believe in healing and they didn't witness to you and you went to hell. Think about that. That's not a good position to be in. And there are many people like that, that if we don't bring them to the Lord, pray that God will open doors for you. And when God opens the doors, it's so simple. It's so simple. It is just so simple because you are the light darkness when you come on the scene darkness disappears 
When the light comes on the scene, mm -hmm. darkness just disappears. You don't have to chase it around. You don't have to whip it. You don't have to yell at it. It just disappears somewhere. The light overcomes the darkness. And let's remember that. And I wanted to share with you something very, very interesting. It was interesting to me as well. In Genesis 12 and verse 7, and mark those down and you will read it after we're done today with this program. And then Genesis 17 and verse 8. Here's what God said to Abraham. It's very interesting. To me, it was very interesting. God says in that scripture, I will give you this land in which you are now an alien. Ponder on that. He was standing on the promised land that God already said, I already have promised that land to you. It's yours. But right now, you still don't have it. You still don't possess it. You are an alien on the land that you're standing on. Now, let me bring it down to brass tacks. While you stand on the promise and the promises of God, God is saying to you, I will give you this land but there's something that you must act on. There's something you must do. Because so many of you have been, oh, I'm standing on the promises. I'm still not healed. Am I right? Am I right or not? Yeah. There's thousands of people suffering with this. I'm talking to them all the time. They're, I'm standing on the promises. Why isn't God healing me? Just let's be blunt. And the Lord showed me this and he said, they are aliens. They're standing on the promise, but it's not theirs. They're not living in the promise. They're standing on the promise. And I have a process that's right there in that Genesis 12 and Genesis 17. It is powerful and it is the truth and it's so simple. And I will, I will give you the simplicity of it. I like to simplify everything so we all know how to get a hold of it. You know what God said to Abram? This is, he said it right here while he said, you're an alien. You're an alien in your own land that I promised you. But God said, you will inherit this land through your seed. My Lord, I can preach on that. Whew. I can't, I can't wait to get on, back on the platform and preach and, and jump around and rejoice and shout and praise the Lord. I will give you this land and I will give it to your seed. So what does that mean for us? That means we need to start sowing seed. We're standing on that land and we don't have the results. We haven't inherited that land that if we can sow into it. You see, if you're an alien, you can't sow into that land. You're standing on it, but you can't sow it and it'll, it'll bring you a harvest. But you're just standing there with your shoes on that land. But God wants you to be able to sow and to receive a harvest. So what are you go, going to sow? The Bible says we should sow, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Mark that down. I'll wait for you and I'll repeat it. Not Mark, Matthew. I'm sorry. Did I say Mark? Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. He said, go around the world and preach the good news. Not the bad news, but the good news. That Jesus is your savior. Jesus is your help. Jesus is your healer. Go and preach the good news. Sow the good news. Hallelujah. So sow the good news into your own life. All right. Think about it this way. I'm standing on this promise. I'm standing in this land and I'm an alien. 
But if I start sowing, the Bible says, you know, I studied this out. Wherever they sowed, they inherited that land. That was amazing. Because like we put fences and say, this is my property. And they said, they never had fences be before. The, I said, well, how did they, you know, which is, you know, how far did they go? How did they know the boundaries? That what's their property and what's someone else's property? You know what they, they said? They told me, and I saw that in the Bible. Whoever sold more had more land. Wherever you sold, it became your land because of seed. Seed inherits the land. Think about that. Seed inherits what God promised. So are you sowing healing seeds every day? You want healing harvest? Start sowing healing seeds. You want blessings on your children and prosperity and success and God's hand on them. Start sowing the, those seeds about blessings on your children. Find the word. Find a seed. The Bible says, buy, 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 buy the, what is it? The good news and sell it not. Buy seed. I remember my dad used to buy seed. He never had good seed from last year. So he went and bought good seed. It cost him money. It cost you time. While others are licking ice cream and watching TV and you're in your office finding seed, you're, you're searching through the word. You're like, somebody's sleeping already. Oh, I'm so tired, I'm gonna sleep. And you're staying up, you're going, oh, I'm gonna find seed. It cost you, it cost you. Somebody's eating until they can't you know, eat anymore and you're fasting because you're going, oh Lord, I need to find seed. I need to sow this seed. So it's gonna cost you, you're gonna pay a price. Somebody's joking around and laughing and you're somewhere tucked away in a closet praying, oh Lord, I pray for my neighbor, she's sick. Lord, heal her. See, you're sowing seed right there. You bought seed because you paid a price. And you're praying for your neighbor. If you're sick, well, why, why, how can I pray for the sick if I'm sick? Oh, hello. Listen to this. Sow the seed of prayer for somebody else who's sick. Don't just, oh, me, I, my sickness. Oh, God, just look at me. No, start sowing seed. Start sowing seed. The Bible says what you sow, it will return to you. You know, every word that you speak, when you sow it out, you, you kind of sow good word. You kind of froze up there for a second. But Sister Marcy, doesn't the Bible say also, pray ye one for another, another. that he may be healed. Oh, oh. Isn't that the, the, what oh. you're talking about right there? Oh, that is powerful. Oh, that is good. That is absolutely what I'm talking about. I didn't even think about that verse. Can you repeat that again to the people? Yes. Pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. Oh, God, that is powerful. See, so in prayer, we don't just beg for ourselves. We pray for others, Lord, heal them, Lord, heal them, Lord, help them, Lord, meet their needs. Oh God, bring peace to that house, bring peace and strength to that house. So what do you do? He said, God said to Abraham, literally there, when he was standing, there is an alien in the promised land that was that God already promised him, he said, God said, I already promised you this land, but you're an alien. You're standing here as an alien. And I wrote it down, my God, while he's an alien, God says to him, so seed, because it's your seed, not someone else's, your seed that's going to inherit this land. Your seed is going to inherit the promise that God gave you. And that's where you have been and I have. All of us have been missing out. We're like, oh, God, touch me, heal me, all this stuff. But we're not sowing the seed. Begin every day. I'm telling you, 365 pages in your notebook. Put Every day, put a seed on there and say, this is the seed for today. This is the seed. I'm the Lord that healeth thee. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. And 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes, you were healed. Uh, from Exodus, there's so many healings. Oh, the, the Old New Testament is full of healing scriptures. So where are they? Find them. Pay price. 
buy this seed and sell it not. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Pay a price for it. And you will appreciate, you will remember it. And in Mark 1, 15, you want the kingdom or the rule of God to flow through your life. He said, repent or forget about the old news. To re is to do it again. That's in English. And pent is the highest penthouse or hotel room in the hotel. Pent is always the highest. So re, return to the highest position in Jesus Christ in Ephesians 2, 6. We are seated at the right hand. Not even the left hand of the Father. I wouldn't even mind to be seated at his feet somewhere. But it's we're seated at the right hand of the Father. The right hand is the ruling hand. That's the royal place. And he said, return to the highest place by doing what? By believing in, it says there, by believing the good news. Start believing good news, not bad news. Start believing the good news. And the Bible says, and the kingdom of God will flow through your entire life. The rule of God, the kingdom. You just look at the word kingdom, king, domain, the king's domain. So there, God is a king. Why do we sit? You sit on your throne because he's a king. The farmers don't sit on no kind of throne, but the king does. And you are his child. And that, that, that should put a new picture for you, even on saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, my Lord, you're praying to the King, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Dear Jesus, he wants us to see that we are his royal family and he's the King. And we're saying our Father, King, Father, you're the King. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We honor your name. We, we lift it up higher. Your name is the highest. There's no other name. There's no name of cancer or sickness or disease or problems or difficulties or wars that are higher than the name of Jesus. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Look at this. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's never... Lord, do what's on earth, and then we're going to make heaven out of that. No, it's always what is in heaven, what's bound in heaven already. You bind it on this earth. Isn't that easy? Isn't that easy? It's such a simple thing to realize, wait a minute, is sickness in heaven? No, it's bound. Is the devil functioning in heaven with all his might? No, he was kicked out of heaven. He's bound. So bound, bind those things that are bound in, bound in heaven and loose those things that are loose in heaven. Oh, don't you want to have what's in heaven? And we have a key. The key is to agree with heaven. Amen. You see that? So when we agree with heaven, how do we agree with him? heaven he said go and preach good news good news what's the good news for a sick person that god is your healer jesus already paid the price on the cross and then he said in those two verses the first verse verse 7 uh, genesis 12 verse 7 says that we should remember and also the 17 verse 8 the covenant remember my covenant that I made with you. He told him about the seed to sow seed, that your seed will inherit. Then he spoke about the covenant. The covenant is the cross, the blood covenant. Oh, hallelujah. The cross. Everything was bought and paid for on that cross. Remember that you're on the other side of the blood of Jesus, that the devil can't cross over the blood. He can't walk and step over the blood of Jesus. Begin to declare the blood of Jesus on your home, on your family, on your life, on your health, on everything. Jesus paid it all. And the Bible says he himself took our sicknesses and our infirmities and he nailed them to the cross. That's it. He nailed them. And that's what God said. You will inherit by your seed. And you will inherit because I made a covenant, a blood covenant. You remember he made that covenant 
and and then it got dark and he was watching uh, over that covenant so that the birds don't steal it away and the birds try and steal that covenant of ours with the old west across how does it apply it applies right now believe in the blood of jesus believe in the cross believe that he nailed all your sins and sicknesses all on that cross it's all on that cross so begin to declare the word the seed and you will find you know i remember i was sick years ago a couple quite a few years ago with something that just wouldn't let me go and I, and I just declared the word, uh, the healing words every day, every day. I just declared, declared, I mean, I'd get up and I'm still not healed. And I'd still declare the word. One morning I got up and that word exploded in my life. And I was immediately healed. Once you sow enough of the word, there's going to be no room for it not to explode. It will explode in your life and you will have faith because faith comes by hearing the word. The word of God, not your own words. Doubt comes by hearing, you know, negative words. But faith comes by hearing God and hearing God's word. And you can mark that down in, in Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. Romans 10, 8 to 11 says that faith is in your mouth. The word of God is in your mouth and the word is faith. You just think of that. How hard is that? Tell me, how hard is that? Do you have to go somewhere around the world to Israel to get faith? It's right in your own mouth. As you declare the word, you hear the word with your own ears, ears and then the faith arises and you're like, yes, I believe. Yes, I believe now. Even the timing, people are like, oh, I don't know when God's going to heal me. I know when he's going to heal you, when you release that faith that's in your mouth, that word that's in your mouth, release it and speak it out loud. And if your faith is we really, your tank is kind of empty, you have to fill that tank first. Fill it, fill it up, fill it up. Speak it until it starts overflowing. And there'll be no room, any more room for it. Hallelujah. And that's when your faith is going to explode. And you will like, wow, that was easy. Yes, it is. Because Jesus did all the work. We don't have to work. We just have to believe what Jesus did. So number one. Sister Marcy, I think we could just stop for a moment and pray for those that don't know Christ as a Savior You've just told us how that all of our sins have been nailed to that cross, as well as all of our diseases. We'll pray for the sick a little later after you finish this message. But I feel right now there are people watching, and you may be in Israel, you may be here in America, wherever you are watching, Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. Yes, your sins have been nailed to that cross, and you can receive freedom from sin. You can be saved. You can be born again. You can become a child of God right now. And I want Sister Marcy to lead you in a prayer right now and before she continues on with this message on faith. But right now, I just sense <clears throat> that there are those who are ready to receive Christ, Sister Marcy, would you invite them to receive Jesus? Yes, thank you. You follow me in prayer, and I'll do it slowly so you can pray. And all of you who feel like you're, I'm too sinful, I'm so not ready. None of us felt ready to get saved. We got saved because we were so wretched. And so that's what God appreciates for you, to turn to him. He'll never turn away from you. Never, never. Think he left heaven, came to our wretched world, died on a cross, paid a big price, and said, now I paid the price for sin. I shed my blood. I died like you should have died. But you don't have to die if you accept me as your Savior. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge that I 
know and I see and I've heard that Jesus died for me in the cross. I acknowledge and know that Jesus died on the cross for me. And that he paid for my sins. And that he paid for my sin. And by his blood, he washes away all of my sin. And by his blood, he washes away all my sins. I receive Jesus into my heart and life right now. I receive Jesus into my heart and life right now. As my personal Savior. <laughs> As my personal Savior. And Lord, give me the strength to follow you the rest of my life. Lord, give me the strength to follow you the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Can you instruct them, you know, to... Yes, if you receive Christ into your life, do three things each day. Talk to him. We call it prayer, but it's simply conversing with God in your own words. Mm. Uh, secondly, allow him to speak to you how, yes, he can speak to your heart, but primarily he speaks to us through his written word, the Bible. So if you don't have a Bible, get one. It's easy. You could download one right into your phone or iPad and begin reading his word. A good place to start is the gospel according to St. John, the fourth book in the New Testament. and. Talk to others about him. Let others know that Jesus is now your Savior. And find, excuse me, a Bible-preaching, Bible-believing church where you can get anchored, where you can grow in your faith. Sister Marcy. Amen. All right, we'll continue with that seed. All right, Galatians 6, 7 to 9 says, Whatever you sow, I'll just quote very short, you know, passage from there. Whatever you sow, you will reap. So sow the things that you want to reap. And it's all in the word. God promised us everything. And you know, the wonderful thing about it is John 19, verse 30. Remember that. Write it down. John 19, 30. He, Jesus said, it is finished. You know, God said it is finished in the second chapter of Genesis when he finished creating everything by his word. He spoke, 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 spoke. And then he rested and he said, it is finished. Well, Adam unfinished it. You know, um, Satan came and said to Eve, no, it's not finished, you know. He didn't do everything for you that he should have done. Now, if you eat this apple, then it's going to be finished. So she believed him, and it got unfinished. They, they were plunged into sin. So the first Adam blew it. But the second Adam came again. Jesus came. He's the second Adam. And he died on the cross. He never sinned. He obeyed the Father. He, he was God himself, basically. Oh, that, that gets me when I realized that Jesus, God was in Christ. God was in Christ. Dying for our sins. Dear Lord in heaven. What a privilege. How can we thank him enough? How can we ever thank him enough? And now he died. He paid for our sins in full. And then. Chapter 19, verse 30 of John. He said, it is finished. It's all done. It is finished. Receive him. Enter into this finished category. That you don't do one more thing to attain salvation. Except you just accept. Just like you did. You accepted Jesus. And it was all finished by him. So let's just recount what we were studying. Hallelujah. You will possess the promises 
through your seed to what you sow. So number one, sow the seed you know you will you you know will result in a harvest you need. Sow the seed you know will result in a harvest you need. So you know, I always go back to the farmers. Yeah, I think the farmers are awesome, you know, because God put man in a garden in a farm, basically. And I remember dad looking through the window on his field and he'd say, hmm, what do I want in that field? I want wheat in that field. So he'd go and get wheat and he'd sow wheat there. You look through your window, your eyes, your window, your imagination, and you say, what do I want? What kind of harvest do I want? Hallelujah. So that seed. You know, can I tell you a little trick? You know, every day you're not going to feel, oh, hallelujah, I'm so great. I'm sowing good seed. I'm going to be healed. Some days you're going to feel like the train hit you. That's why you take a notebook. And for every day on a page, you know, day one, day two, or whatever you want, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, write it down and write by stripes, I'm healed. Whether the train hits you or not, you still can read that. You don't need no emotions for that. Just read it. And just said, I don't care how I feel. I'm reading this. I'm sowing this seed in tears. The Bible says they that sow in tears are reap in joy. And so most of the time we have to sow in tears because we don't see the results. Maybe you're so sick, you don't feel like sowing. Just read it. Just read it. Okay. Jesus said it is written. Jesus was quite uh, not sick, but, you know, he, he was fasting 40 days in the wilderness. And he was not exactly, you know, I don't know, having a party. And when the devil came to him, he, Jesus just said, he didn't say, oh, I feel like it or not. He said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread. See? It is written. So when the devil comes to you, just say, wait a minute, devil, let me find it. Let me find it. Oh, what's the seed for today? It is written. By his stripes, you were healed. Ha, 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 ha. And I don't care how I feel. So be careful with your feelings because you're going to go up and down and erase your seeds and dig them up and throw them in the garbage. Don't do that. Daily, 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 put a seed in there and read it daily, read it daily, read each day. If you want, you could read in a, a different seed, but a seed that heals you if you need healing. So sow the seed, the right seed that you want to reap, a harvest. And then I wrote here, like we already went through that. A seed is not only the words you speak, but also the deeds that you do. Maybe someone needs encouragement. And I don't know, nowadays maybe it's getting to the point where we're all going on a diet and maybe it's not in style to make a cake for someone, but maybe if they're on a diet, don't give them a cake, give them something else. But, you know, like we say, bake a cake and bring a cake to your neighbor. God will guide you. I've done so many things like that. And people are, how did you know I just needed this right now? The Lord knows. The Lord knows. And he makes us look so smart. He does. We look like, oh, we know what we're doing. And if those people would know, I didn't know what I was doing. I just following the Lord. But the Bible says, do all in the name of Jesus. Do all in Jesus' name, which brings you above every circumstance, every situation. And you're victorious. The Bible says God always leads us in triumph. Think about it. He always leads us in triumph. Not in defeat, in triumph. So right now, as we're looking at that war and everything else, God is leading us in triumph. Let's be the light. Let's let our light shine. So encourage someone else. Edify the body of Christ. That is our goal and our mission on this earth. Like I told someone else, they were saying, well, you know, uh, he wasn't going to church or something like that. And I said, you know what? Don't talk like that. I'm going to church because you are the church. You're going to a gathering so the church can gather and agree together. And you can imagine what power that is when 3,000 people come together. The Bible says one or two when they agree, then they can chase a thousand. And think about 3,000 people agreeing on the same song, on the same verse, say, agreeing on worshiping God. 
there no wonder it's easy to accept things and receive things in church why because there's no devils in there already those devils just went somewhere they're not even in the parking lot there's too much power right there for the devil to it and i used to do this and i still do this and i'm sta standing you know some days like you didn't sleep long enough or you still needed to sleep but you dressed up and you went to church all the way to church you were thinking about sleeping and you were like oh oh god i don't know why i feel like this you know that is the best time to stand up on your feet and praise the lord when everybody says stand up and praise you stand up raise your hands you know what I do when I feel like that rotten? Because for me to stand up and praise the Lord, it becomes a sacrifice. And as I study the Old and New Testament, I see that God always comes and lands and sits on every sacrifice. Woo! Glory be to Jesus. So when I make this sacrifice of praise to the Lord, God is right sitting on top of me. Hallelujah. And so when I feel rotten like that, I this is what I do. I get up and I say, devil devil just come here come here come here where are you why don't you come here watch me praise the lord you just watch me and see me praising the lord i'm telling you the spirit of god comes god comes and god sits on that sacrifice that i am making because i didn't feel like praising the lord but i made a sacrifice of praise unto the lord so remember you don't feel like sowing healing so it that's a sacrifice god will come and sit on it Hallelujah. He accepted every sacrifice that was made. God came down to that sacrifice. So when you make that sacrifice of giving someone something, praying for someone is a sacrifice for you. You're thinking, I need that. And I have to pray for some. Pray, make that sacrifice. Because when God sits on you, whew, you are victorious. You have everything you ever need and ever will need. God is a good God. And I pray that today you will receive that healing because you will begin even in your heart now. Lord, I'm going to start sowing seeds. You know, God is so good. He's like a big old father. And he looks on us and he's like, oh, I'm going to just bless her. She's got the right attitude. She's got the right thoughts. And I'm going to help her find the seed. And she will sow it. And her healing is there in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. And maybe you're that person right now who needs a healing touch in your body. And we're going to pray for you right now. If you've got friends, got loved ones who are in need of healing, call them up, text them, do whatever you've got to do. Get them on here right now. We're about to pray. We're going to Pray the prayer of faith over you. Yes, you've heard the word. The seed has been sown. Now let's activate that seed. Release that power of God in your life so that you may experience the healing power that Jesus already paid for in your life, in your home, in your family, mm. in your children, in your spouse, in those uh, grandkids. Yes, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're going to be praying for you. So just get a hold of the horns of the altar, as we used to say. And Sister Marcy leads us in prayer right now. Go ahead, Sister Marcy. You know, if you want to put your hand on, on, on your sickness, on your arm, your leg, whatever is hurting you, your head or whatever, just put it there and believe that right now, who said you have to wait five minutes? You don't. You can be healed this moment in the name of Jesus. Father, you see the people who have raised their hand to you in one hand, they're putting in the place where they're, they're having pain or sickness or something is not working right. Lord Jesus, we know that it takes you a second, not even a second because eternity doesn't even in no time. In the name of Jesus, we're speaking eternal words of healing by his stripes. You are healed right now right now in jesus name because jesus name takes us higher above that sickness above that disease above that problem that infirmity whatever you have in your life and the the, the children that you're praying for you are above because you're praying in the name of jesus and it's touching their hearts even now they're wondering why am i feeling this way why am i feeling like i need to go to church why am i feeling like i need to begin to believe in a god of the of my 
mother or my father or my brother or my sister. Oh God, we thank you for moving mightily throughout the world, Lord, everywhere around the world, whoever's sick. They're being healed and they're glorifying your name in Jesus' name. And those who are not saved, they're getting saved. And those who need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they're being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in out of their tongues, which releases the jubilee. Woo, the Jubilee is the year when everything returned to the original owner. And you originally were made by God to be healthy and strong. And when you pray in the in this Holy Spirit, you're praying that Jubilee to be existing in your life and to happen in your life. You just think everything, everything that is in Christ is released to you in the year of Jubilee. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing the sick, for saving the lost, for encouraging the discouraged, and for those who are harassed by demons. Oh, so many people are harassed by demon powers, spirits of darkness. In the name of Jesus, you have no place in this, in this Christian's life. They are the light of the world. Arise and shine for your light has come. Arise and awake and God will give you light. In Jesus name, devil, leave them alone and go under our feet where you belong. In Jesus name, amen. And Father, we speak healing over that one who is in, who's struggling with cancer right now. We command every cancer cell in your body to die and come yes. out in Jesus' yes. name. I speak to that brain aneurysm. Be dissolved yes. in Jesus' name. Be gone right now. Father, we thank oh, you for Jesus. healing that arthritic pain in somebody's knees in Jesus' name. Yes. Name healing, come forward, may the yes. balm of God just touch your knees right now, bringing healing, restoration to those knees, to those joints right now, that ankle be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, those eyes, yes, that eyesight, come open in Jesus' name, eyes be healed. Yes. Ears come on, stop, be healed in Jesus' name. That noise uh, mm -hmm. in the ears be gone in Jesus' name. Tonight us be healed in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for that shoulder pain leaving right now. We thank you for that back pain leaving in Jesus' name. We thank you for those so the soles of the feet being healed, that burning being gone, the sensation be gone in Jesus' name right now. And Lord, we thank you. I thank you for healing those toes right now. And that Amen. information be gone in Jesus' name. Right now, yes, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Healing virtual manifesting in people around the world. Yes, that infection in the blood be gone in Jesus' name. Lord, we send you your word to those pastors in India and in Nepal, those pastors that, uh, that one that was in a motorcycle accident. Lord God, heal him in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the pastor in Cuba who's had uh, an infection in his bloodstream. Thank you for healing him. We rebuke that infection in Jesus' name. And Lord, we send your word to the nations wherever people are at right now, whether it be in Spain or in Italy or here in America or Canada or Mexico or Cuba or Argentina, Brazil, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, in Ukraine, in Russia, in Armenia. God is touching you right now. There is no distance in prayer. Just open your heart and say, thank you, Jesus. I receive my healing. I am connecting my faith to your promises, oh God, releasing those promises to be activated in my life, in my home, in my family, in my circumstances, 
In Jesus' name, and Lord, I thank you for that financial breakthrough. We break that curse of poverty. We are not under the curse. We are under the blessing of God, the blessing of Abraham, and the blessings of God are ours in Jesus' name. And so we release, oh God, financial um, blessing into the lives of your church, the lives of your people, of those tuning in right now. In Jesus' name, we break that curse of poverty that has haunted you. And in Jesus' name, we set you free. Be free in Jesus' name. Be free in Jesus' name from that bondage uh, uh, of the enemy. And in Jesus' name, may you prosper as you sow seeds of faith right now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Sister Marcy, our time has run quickly. I want us to pray for America. Uh, would you pray for America? America needs revival. And need, uh, we are seeing sparks here and there, but we want to see a greater move of God in this nation. And as we agree in prayer, if two agree, if more agree, so much more can happen and uh, but it starts with one or two or three agreeing but let me tell you there's power in prayer god hears the prayers of his people and it is god's will to bring revival back to this nation, that this nation again would just send missionaries all over the world, that this nation again would shine with the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ to the nations. Uh, Sister Marcy. Father God, I just agree with everything that Brother Walter has said, Lord, that your power and might will flow through this nation, Lord. We just pray even for the White House. We pray for the government. We pray for the governments throughout all the states here in the United States of Hawaii and Alaska and, and Canada and North and Central America, Lord. We just pray in the name of Jesus and South America, I think I said that. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that there will be a revival throughout this land, that people will be coming to get into that warmth of that revival, that fire of the Spirit of God, that they will be revived and go back to their countries and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, and the healer, and the deliverer, and the mighty God, the King that we serve. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the answer. We thank you that you've heard our prayer and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, I just want to say this, that we continue to uh, be very much involved in the humanitarian relief efforts in Ukraine. It is resulting in this, not only the help to many people, but the salvation of thousands of souls the growth of churches, mm. areas, especially if, uh, fronting the war zones. And we're seeing this mm. up of new churches in areas where refugees were, re, were uh, resettled temporarily. And we are believing God for greater uh, things there, spiritually speaking and financially. But we're praying for an end to that war. In the meantime, we ask that if God speaks to you, you want to participate in the humanitarian relief efforts. They are many. Winter is beginning to set in. The weather being getting colder makes it more difficult for people to survive, especially in areas that have had no electricity and no gas for some time now because of the war. But um, we continue to work and God continues to supply, but we can only do what we do as you obey God and sow into this ministry. So if you want to sow into what we're doing in Ukraine, if you want to sow into what we're doing in other nations, we continue to support the work of God in India and in um, Nepal, in Cuba, in other parts of the world. We rely on God and God speaking to people like you. So I want to thank you in advance for sowing 
And you could do that by going to our webpage right now, globalvisionministries.org. There are options to give there. And you could also do it by writing a check to the ministry and sending it to P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. Sister Marcy, thank you. Thank you for your participation in the broadcast. Thank you for your support of the work of God in the nations of the world. May God bless you, your husband, your family, and your ministry. And thank you again for coming on the broadcast today. Amen. Thank you for inviting me. I just wanted to share one sentence that people will not forget. Think of it. You can have a part of Ukraine the people that get saved there and everything, they'll go to your account. Mm. And when you get to heaven, they will greet you. They will greet you by sending seed. You don't even have to go there. You can just send seed. And so remember this, your seed will inherit, God said, what I promised. Your seed will inherit. And you know, when you give seed, when you send seed, you think, well, how, how, what am I going to inherit from Ukraine? You know what you're going to inherit? You, uh, you know, I was so blessed so many times that I didn't even recognize the blessings. We were living in a smaller house and my son and, and husband built a beautiful, beautiful house that was just too beautiful for me, I thought. And I said, Lord, I don't even deserve that house. And God so worked it out that I, we had to move to that house. And I sat there and I cried and I said, God, I just feel like a queen in this house. Why did you give me such a beautiful house? And God said, I honored you because you always honored me. You, you went, you sowed seed, you sowed seed around the world where you didn't even go and you sowed seed. And God said, this is an honor to you because you're my queen. I'm a king, and you're my queen, and I wanted you to honor like a queen. You see, God will honor you. And then I go to church, and somebody reads, the pastor could read John 3, 16, and I get so blessed. I get so much revelation. God, why am I getting so much revelation? Don't these people get revelation? God said, because you're married to me. Because do you know that your tithe that you give to church or to a ministry that is like a ring before God. And God said, you're displaying that ring that you belong to me because you're tithing. You're giving the first tenth, not the last, but the first tenth. And then I'll watch over the rest, the nine tenths that you have, and I will bless it and multiply you. You know, you just think if you put a sack of wheat and you divide it, the first seat is for God, the second, third, fourth, and all the way till the 10th. All the nine seats are yours. All the nine inches are used, yours, but the first inch is God's. And what did you do? You just gave God the right to sit on it. He sat on your whole sack because he sat on the first 10th, on the first seat. And he said, and I will, in other words, just think he's, wobbling his feet there. And if the devil comes, he just kicks the devil in the face. He protects the nine inches that are yours because you gave him the first inch and he's sitting on your entire sack. Oh, that's a blessing. Think of it. He watches over it and he blesses. He blesses your family. Many times I go, God, how you just bless our family so much. How come, how come? God always reminds me, because I always think I'm still not doing enough for God, you know. And he always assures me, I'm blessing you, because you always think how you can help people, how you can give, how you can tithe in the church, and you do it with joy. I do it with joy. It's like someone gave me a gift when I give. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it. It's such a joy in my life to be able to give. And to sow. My goodness, it's just such a blessing. I don't know how you live without sowing and reaping. How do you enjoy life? I enjoy giving so much that I, I reap, but I'm not sowing just to reap. I'm sowing because I love the Lord. And I want to see people saved. 
and healed and delivered. That's why I'm sorry. It's it's a love affair with between me and the Lord, the giving. It's not some kind of task, some kind of chore. It's a joy, such a joy. Don't you enjoy giving to your children, to your husband, to your wife Christmas time? You're hiding that gift and you were so rejoicing. You were almost shaking and you were like, oh, they're going to, you enjoy giving to someone you love. You love the Lord. Prepare that gift and present it to him. And God will reward you. God is a faithful God. Don't worry about his rewards. He's so faithful. Let's just become faithful to him. And he will do it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. And it is an up. You have the opportunity to sow into the nations of the world. And uh, that is where our heart is. That is where we are working in the nations, such as Ukraine is not the only nation. We work in many nations of the world, but that is one of the ones we have been focusing much because of the ongoing war. Thank you for praying for us. Um, as some of you know, Nina and I are scheduled to be in Israel in a couple of weeks uh, we um, uh, don't know what will happen with that, but we are praying. We want to, we still sense we need to go there. And in God's timing, if the, if we should have to postpone, we will postpone. But in God's timing, we intend on being there. Uh, God laid Israel on our heart and um, we, on our hearts, and we are believing for a harvest of souls in the nation of Israel. Pray for yeah. the pastors there. Pray for the churches there. And that in the midst of these trials and difficulties mm -hmm. of the ongoing war, they would be used by God as never before. Mm -hmm. And also that they would not be uh, in some way adversely affected and, um, and, and, um, and perhaps would pressure against Christians because of whatever's going on. Sometimes things happen in the midst of um, a conflict like this. Mm -hmm. Pray for people in the nation of Israel, mm -hmm. in those in the region of Gaza, in the region of the West Bank. There are mm -hmm. believers there. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Pray that God would work in their midst mm -hmm. as well. And so thank you for joining us again. Continue to join us. And remember, let's not look at how big our needs may appear. Let's put our eyes on Christ. He is the answer. Mm -hmm. He has not changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.